Let's start our time together today with a little exercise. Who here is bad at something? Raise your hand. No shame. OK. If you're here with someone you know, point to them if you think they know you're bad at that thing. And if you're by yourself, you can just point to me if you think other people know that you're bad at it. Go ahead. Again, no shame. <laughs> There's some shame out there. But let's instead just give ourselves a round of applause because we all suck. And apparently other people know it. It's OK. I'm actually really glad to know that I'm not alone. Full disclosure, I am generally one of those really annoying overachievers. But there's something I've always been really bad at. Math. It all started with a pencil case. I was 10, and I had some pretty pressing priorities in my life, like finally beating the boss in Sonic the Hedgehog and tuning our antenna so I could get in that latest episode of Goosebumps. Somehow, I was also expected to learn how to multiply. Luckily, I had this pencil case that I could turn, and it would show me the times tables for each number. I'd done all of them except for eight, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows is the hardest, but I just couldn't put it off any longer. So I turned my pencil case to eight. Let's do this. But instead of digging in, I started to barter with myself. Listen, Emily, you know all of the other times tables, which technically means you know eight. Plus, eight is really just two of the four times table, which was an easy one. So we're probably good here. And so I put the pencil case down and decided not to learn it. And I think that this is where my weird complex with math started. My next run in with the math monster was sixth grade. Geometry test. C plus. Can't tell you exactly how the classroom exit played out, but I definitely remember crying in the last bathroom stall, staring at my page. C plus. What was I going to do? My overachieving self assumed that this was the end of my academic career, that it was all just downhill from there. But then another idea came to my mind. What if I was just bad at math? I mean, I'd never gotten a C plus in any other subject before. And that's what I told my parents. And that's what I told myself. So it began my life of being bad at math. By 11th grade, math actually got pretty tough. I think I studied more for that class than I have anything in my entire life. And I still only ended up with a 69. To this day, my mom will tell you, it was my hardest earned grade. To this day, I will tell you that in math terms, there was a direct correlation between the number of hours I studied for that class and the number of times I threw my textbook against the wall. This is my high school transcript. That 69 is in a C of 80s and 90s. And although I'm more proud of that grade than any other up there, it cemented the fact that I just could not do math. No matter how hard I studied, no matter how hard I tried, I would never be good at math. And it made sense to me. I was a right brain person. I was good at drama and English. Of course, I couldn't also be good at math. Everyone knows you're either mathy or you're artsy. Nobody gets to be both. Plus, I wanted to help people. And I was pretty sure you didn't need to be a mathematician to change the world. I vowed never to take another math class again. Liberated without the chains of math, I loved my university degree and managed to score myself a full ride scholarship to an MBA. There was one condition. I had to pass a standardized test. It had a math section. Looking at your grades, you'll ace it in three weeks. 
the program director told me. Easy, I thought. And then I opened the study guide. Triangles, graphs, letters masquerading as numbers. All of those mathy things I knew that I couldn't do. Fast forward those three weeks, and then another three, because I was in no way ready like the program director thought. I take the test, I bomb it. And I mean bomb. Not like a C plus and crying it off in the little girl's room. I mean bombed like a 10th percentile score, looking up how to become an au pair in Germany, because I'm pretty sure I have no future bombed. True story. <laughs> I managed to talk my way into the program without it, but I had to be on academic probation. Pretty humbling for what I'm sure you're now thinking of as an ex overachiever. In the program, math reared its ugly head again. I made it through finance and accounting with the help of my tutor and now spouse of seven years, Matt, but I could not do stats. I actually went to talk to my stats professor for some help, and he told me that I should just drop out of the program because there was no way I would ever pass, much less be successful in business. Somehow, I made it through, and while the math was a challenge for me, it's like it opened this completely different side of me, something I never knew existed. I learned that I was amazing at using math to solve practical problems. Something some people who were good at math seemed to struggle with. It was like once the math became more than just numbers on a page, once it started to mean something to me, it just kind of clicked. I remember we were working on a client project, and we were trying to prove if one of our recommendations was correct. And I said, well, let's just take this data point and this data point, and we'll run a regression to see if we're right. Excuse me? I couldn't believe the words coming out of my mouth. I knew what a regression was and how to run one. But the major turning point for me was when another student came up to me after a presentation and said, you're a great presenter and you're really creative. Too bad you're so bad at math. And for the first time, I got mad. I wasn't bad at math. Sure, it wasn't my natural strength, but I definitely wasn't bad at it. It's like I finally got sick of this box that I put myself in. In a world goes full circle, ain't karma hilarious twist, my first job after graduating was in market research, which is stats. I spent hours poring over data tables finding statistically significant data points, and making recommendations to big corporate brands. I did this using math. In just two years, I went from someone who couldn't do math to a complete data nerd. At 24, I became the president and part owner of an international tech company that helps nonprofits measure hunger and poverty. Whether it's helping one of our clients, put together a report, or defining some new analytic for our platform, or doing financial analysis, I now use math every day of my life. And it's helped our company impact over 1.7 million people living in poverty. I guess math can help you on your quest to change the world. But even though math has given me a life I never could have dreamed of when I put that pencil case down 20 years ago. It's not the math that matters. What matters is realizing that something I thought about myself for most of my life was wrong. What matters is realizing that I had written a story and said it out loud so many times that it actually started to come true. What matters is deciding it was time to make some edits. The truth is, we grow and we change. We shouldn't be the person we were at 10, or at least we don't have to be if we don't want to. Life puts us in situations that challenges us and forces us to go out of our comfort zone. 
questioning who we are in those moments is how we fall into ourselves. But if we keep telling ourselves these same old stories, if we keep prescribing to convenient labels like right-brained and left-brained, that's how we miss out on getting what the world has to offer. So let's try this again. This time, close your eyes. Think of one of these stories you tell yourself with eyes closed. Raise your hand when you've got one. Now point to the writer and narrator of that story. And now give yourselves a round of applause because you just took the first step toward rewriting it.